Hello everyone, welcome back. It's May 11th of 2025, and this is a close-up of one of our sunflower pawpaw flowers. I thought we'd talk a little bit today about frost tolerance and pawpaw flowers, which is something you don't hear a lot about. And we'll also look at the different stages of flowers that might be on your tree at the same time. So let's head out to the orchard and we'll kind of take a look at some of these and talk a little bit about that. So one thing you're going to notice right away when you look at this is our sunflower pawpaw tree where that flower was that you saw a second ago is you're going to see flowers in all different stages from barely starting to almost ready to pollinate. Now that's not totally unique to pawpaws but they will have a much longer blooming season than pretty much any other fruit that we grow. Um, apples they might flower really for like 10 days maybe. Uh, for the most part, pawpaws could be two or three weeks. And when you look at something like this, you have this tiny little green kind of pea shape in the background. Then you have green flowers and red flowers. The red ones are the most developed. Um, all of that kind of helps in terms of frost tolerance. Now let's talk temperatures. It On Thursday and Friday night, so Thursday night, this tree registered. I have a um, weather station in this tree, one of the SwitchBot sensors. Thursday night it was 29.7 for about half an hour and Friday night it was 29.9 so I'm filming this on Sunday these flowers are totally undamaged but there were um, there was frost on the ground and some patchy frost on the trees both mornings but um, nothing was damaged so these are easily frost hardy to 29 degrees and anecdotally, I can tell you that the frost tolerance on these is comparable to apples, I would say. So like 28 and below, you can expect damage, but 28 and above, like above 28, you should be fine. This is a, kind of the whole thing right here. So this is a cool picture because you have the growth tips where the leaves are starting on the top. On the very bottom, you have a just at the beginnings of a bud that's starting to open. On the left you have the green bell and on the right you have what I call the red bell. And the red is you know, when they're totally ready to pollinate they'll sort of open up and flatten out and we'll make a video to show how we hand pollinate them. So on the topic of pollination if you take a look at this next scene here on the far right you'll see a fly kind of crawling around in the bottom of that pawpaw flower. And Pawpaw flowers are unique in the fact that bees don't really pay attention to them. We have bees all over the orchard today with all the apple trees and all the other uh, fruit trees in full bloom. Bees don't really visit pawpaw flowers. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen a bee go to a pawpaw flower. And it's just one of the quirks of the tree. They're pollinated by insects like bugs and um, flies and so forth, which are kind of unreliable to a degree, so that's why I like to hand pollinate. Um, and so I'll show how we do that when they're ready, but this is the Shenandoah pawpaw Just really cool. Like I mentioned, it's a, such a pretty flower and such a unique tree And of course once they leaf out they have the beautiful really long foliage So there's really no negatives to pawpaws. I found them honestly to be one of the easiest fruit trees we have They they don't need really any care you put them in the ground and they just grow they're a native crop you know so they were here long before we were and they they're doing their thing so if you're looking for an easy to grow rewarding fruit tree you will need two because you need two different um, varieties in order to cross pollinate but put up a couple pawpaws in your yard and you definitely won't be disappointed <laughs> 